All right, so I want to talk also about fiscal federalism today. Now, fiscal federalism is not separate than cooperative federalism, but fiscal federalism is more of a, a way to do things, a way for the national government to get involved in those state policies. So we're going to look at how the national government is able to use its uh, superior ability to raise money uh, in order to influence the states to make policies. So before we get into the money stuff, let's actually make sure that we understand what a mandate is. So a mandate is a basic tool that the national government uses in which it orders the states to do something. The states have to follow the order. That's the supremacy clause, Article 6. When the national government tells the states to do something, they must do it because national law is always supreme over states. Sometimes the national government will give the states money to pay for what they want them to do. So sometimes the national government gives the states money to do these programs. That would be what the states would prefer. Sometimes the national government does not. And in that case, we call this an unfunded mandate. So this is what makes the states upset. The national government tells them to do something and uh, they have to do it. But the national government does not give them any increased funding to make it happen. And so the states have to find a way to pay for that. So in this chapter, we learned about things like the Americans with Disabilities Act. That's a really good example of an unfunded mandate. So this was passed in 1991, said that the states basically had to make all reasonable accommodations for people with physical disabilities. That includes things like uh, ramps for wheelchairs or elevators if your building didn't have elevators, um, alterations to the restrooms and things like that. The states then have to make sure that all of their buildings and facilities, any public building, is accessible for people with physical disabilities, but the national government did not give them any money to do so. And so it's up to the states to find ways to raise the money to put in uh, ramps everywhere to put in uh, elevators and all their buildings that don't have them and things like that. So unfunded mandate would mean that the national government has ordered the states to do something, but did not give them money to do it. All right, so now we can get into the heart of fiscal federalism. This just means that the national government is influencing the states by using their superior money making ability. The national government can get the states to do what they want if they give the states money. So the national government has a lot of capacity to raise money. They have lots. They can tax our income directly. They can tax the income of every American. They can tax, uh, you know, all sorts of imports. They can raise money in a variety of different ways. The states don't have that same ability. The states can charge taxes and things like that. But the states have to worry about competition. Let's think about things here, right here in Memphis. If Tennessee were to raise its taxes very high in order to pay for its programs, we'd have a lot of people move right across the state line to Mississippi or Arkansas because it's easy to move from state to state. You are probably not going to move to a different country because of the national government's tax rates. So the national government has an easier time getting the money. The other thing is the national government does not have to balance its budget. The national government runs big deficits every year and they borrow money that they'll just pay back sometime in the future. But the states have requirements that they have to balance their budget. So the states are desperate to get national money. The states are desperate for any money that they can get. And that usually means that they will do what the national government wants. They'll change their policies in order to get that money. So this usually happens through programs that we call grant and aid programs. And a grant and aid program means that the national government is giving money to the states and helping the states do what the national government wants by giving them money. So there's different types of grants that we'll talk about. Um, but first, let's talk about the old system here. This There was a system back before the 1970s where the national government just took the extra money that it made in taxes every year and it divided it up among the states according to a formula that was based on population and space and stuff like that. So the national government was giving the states money and not getting anything in return. So starting in the 1970s, the national government realized that a much more effective, for them, a much more effective way to do things was to require states to do things in exchange for the money. So that's why we've shifted to a system of grants 
Let's talk first about a project grant. A project grant is exactly what it sounds like. It's a grant for a project. So the national government gives money for a specific project, maybe a bridge, a library, or something like that. Usually, though, this goes for research. So we might see a project grant go to a state's uh, university system uh, in order to do a certain amount of research. So maybe, maybe a university system gets a three-year grant to do disease prevention research, but the national government has given money to the states and told them exactly what to use it for. We also have one of our newer forms, the competitive grant. Now this one is, this is really good for the national government. It's almost a little evil. The national government is going to offer uh, a select amount of grants as a prize and it will make the states compete for those prizes. The state that meets the goal first gets the money. So here, the national government can trick lots of the states into doing something to try to win this money and they don't even have to pay all of the states. So in this way, the national government can accomplish a lot more with a limited number of grants by making the states fight each other for it. So an example of this, this happened under the Obama administration. Obama wanted to reform the school systems in the states, even though those were state policies. So he created a program called Race to the Top for the states to uh, change their education systems. And at the time, Tennessee had one of the uh, lowest ranked education systems. The Obama uh, Department of Education, they uh, set all these goals that they wanted the states to meet. Tennessee was desperate for that money. And so Tennessee changed a lot of its policies immediately, adopted the Common Core immediately, changed the way they hired and paid teachers immediately. And so Tennessee won this money. Several other states tried, several other states implemented these reforms also, but Tennessee won the Race to the Top grant, and so Tennessee was awarded with lots and lots of money to uh, improve its education system. Other states that made the same reforms, but not as quickly or as effectively, they made the reforms that the national government wanted and didn't necessarily get the same amount of money. So the competitive grant allows the national government to like really take advantage of the states being desperate for money. Now, our two main types of grants would be the block grant and the categorical grant. It's really important that you guys can describe the difference between the block grant and the categorical grant, and you can explain why the national government would prefer one, the state would prefer the other. So let's start with the block grant. The block grant is a grant the national government gives to the states for a broad purpose. And this grant usually has no strings attached. And so the national government might say, we're going to give the states a grant for transportation. Now, transportation is pretty broad. So that means each state gets to decide how they want to spend that money. Uh, in this case, like New York might spend the money on subways, but in Tennessee, we don't have subways. So Tennessee might spend that money on highways. Um, Louisiana might see that there's more of a need to fix its like water transportation systems and things like that. So the states can use the money in ways that are flexible for those states. Similarly, the national government could say that they're going to give out grants to the states for something like education. There's a, there's a program called education grants, education block grants for states. Tennessee might decide that what they need most are schools. We need to build some new schools. Mississippi might make the decision. We need to hire some more teachers. Um, and Kentucky could decide to spend that money on universities instead of uh, lower schools. So it's for a broad purpose and the states like this because the states get the freedom to decide. So this is good for states. It also might be, uh, it's pretty efficient because the states are addressing the problems that are most important to them. We've also got categorical grants. Categorical grants are for a specific purpose and usually come with strings attached. So the national government likes categorical grants the most. The national government gets to tell states exactly what they have to spend the money for. And sometimes they can even make the states do something in order to get that money. So an example of a categorical grant that you guys are familiar with would be the uh, the drinking age and highway money categorical grant. So all of the states have roads. 
all of the states tr struggle to maintain their roads and they need money to help maintain their roads. So the national government gave states money to help pay for their roads. In exchange, the national government said, if you want this grant, you must make your state drinking age 21. And so this way the states had to uh, either meet a standard already or they had to change their policy and if they did they got money but they got money that they could only spend on a specific thing so this is a great example of a categorical grant the national government likes categorical grants because the national government gets to decide exactly how that money is spent all right, and then a couple other quick things real quick. There are other ways that the national government can do things. Uh, one of these is what we call matching funds. So the national government might just tell the states they, they want the states to do a variety of projects, and they might say, all right, we'll just match your funds on whatever you spend on a project. And this would incentivize the states to do a project because if the national government is going to match the money that the states spend on a project, then the states can complete projects at half price. We also have what we call cross-cutting requirements, and this just means that if a national government gives a grant to something, then all national requirements get imposed on anything connected to this money. So this is usually to like stop uh, different forms of discrimination. If you're accepting a grant from the federal government, like if you're accepting a grant for your schools from the federal government, even if it's a grant to uh, build a new building or something like that, it means that your school, since your school is connected to the money, your school must follow all national restrictions um, on discrimination from the government. So you'd have to ensure that there's no discrimination of any kind taking place at your school. And then crossover sanctions. This is the the basically the example of the highway funds and the uh, drinking age here. This is where the national government is going to give money for one policy or project, but they're going to require a policy change in something else. So crossover sanction, usually a form of a categorical grant. So that is fiscal federalism. That is letting us uh, explore how the national government gives its, uh, gets its influence in the state policies by giving its money to the states. So what we'll explore last is what we call new federalism.